have your Bibles, turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 4. 1 Chronicles chapter 4. I'm glad that it ended up being this way, that we have uh, five Sundays in the month of December. It's always a, a good idea, and, and hopefully you are uh, you know, taking your plans for next year uh, to God in prayer. Uh, but I certainly appreciate the opportunity that we've had tonight to take the, the plans and the hopes and the, the needs of this congregation to the Lord in prayer. We are certainly, again, thankful for that. When we think about prayers in the Bible, there are, of course, a, a lot of different prayers that are uh, prayed, that are mentioned, that are written, uh, a lot of different even lessons that we can take from them. And one of those from 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, uh, is a prayer from a man named Jabez, uh, a man who we don't know anything else about. Two verses, verses 9 and 10 uh, of this uh, passage here, out of the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of verses found in the Bible, uh, we find uh, just this little bit of information about this man and, uh, and then a prayer that he prays. And I want us to briefly, uh, hopefully, look at that tonight. It says in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, starting verse 9, it says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Now, you may not have taken the time, but if you look before verse 9 and if you look after verse 10, uh, you'll see that we're in the midst of a, a genealogy. The, this person begat this person, begat this person, begat this person, so on and so forth. It's one of those passages that most of the time, if you are in your daily Bible reading, you might skip some of these verses. Uh, you may not take the time to, to read all of these. It's certainly not the most intriguing or the most uh, uh, interesting passages that we read. But here in verse 9 and 10, in the midst of what, again, is uh, admittedly, uh, some pretty dull reading uh, as far as uh, reading goes for, for entertainment purposes. Uh, we read about a man named Jabez. We, again, before this, don't know anything about him. After this, we don't know anything about him. But it says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. That word honorable there doesn't mean that people just liked him more. Uh, it carries with it the idea of, the, of his actions led to him being honored. His, his lifestyle led to people recognizing him as living a little bit differently. I think it's important. You know, it doesn't tell us anything about his brothers, anything about these people that are mentioned before him or after him. Uh, we don't, as far as we know, they're not terrible people. Uh, but it says that he distinguished himself as more honorable. He led a life that was different, that was uh, even, even now, some you know, thousands of years later, we're reading about him. And, and God, through inspiration, took the time to make sure that we knew there was something different about Jabez, uh, and especially something different about the way that he lived his life, which is a, in, a, in and of itself a lesson for us. And it says, And his mothers named him Jabez, which means sorrow, saying, Because I bore him in pain. Talking about a, a name to, to not want to live up to or to, to want to surpass in our lives. Uh, you know, if you called your children sorrow, sadness, grief, pain, those are probably not on the top 50 list of uh, baby names for this year, I wouldn't think. Uh, that, but, but that's what his mom names him. Uh, and there may have been reasons for that. We're not told what kind of pain. Was it that she physically bore him in pain? Well, that usually happens, doesn't it, ladies? That you physically bear your children in pain. Uh, was there some sort of emotional pain or uh, some sort of spiritual pain? We're, we're not told. Uh, but it's, uh, it was such, to such an extent that she names her child Sorrow. Verse 10, now Jabez, okay, here's pretty much all we know about him, what he does. Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, he says this prayer. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm, that it may not pain me. And God granted him what he requested. Why did God grant him what he requested? Probably why did God take the time to tell us about him? Why did God tell us, take the time to tell us that he answered this man's prayer? Because he was honorable. He was more honorable. He lived a different kind of life. He lived a life that was pleasing to God. And because of that, God answered his prayer. When it says, when he says there, oh, that you would bless me indeed, in reality in the Hebrew, he says the same word twice. He says that you would bless me. Bless me. Uh, the, the emphasis that he's putting there is, is I really want your blessings. Uh, I want you to bless me uh, as much as you can, God. I want you to bless me how, how you deem right. I want you to give me everything uh, that, 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 I, that, I, that you would be willing to give to me. Bless me indeed and enlarge my border. Now, it, it's possible and, and certainly perhaps even probable that, uh, that, that he means here that uh, you know, he has a certain amount of land and they could buy and sell land in the, in, in the Jewish uh, um, 
culture. Uh, but every 50 years, they, have, they would have what would be called the year of Jubilee. Uh, and whoever, whatever land belonged to whatever family, to whatever son and whatever family, it would automatically revert back to ownership to the original owners. So when he says that you would enlarge my border, maybe he simply means, maybe, maybe this is all it is. Maybe he just wants a little bit more land. Uh, but that's not going to last. Uh, so perhaps he might mean as an honorable man, God, give me the opportunity to have more of an influence in the people, in the lives of the people around me. Uh, and give me more people to have a, a good influence on. Uh, and, and God, knowing that Jabez is an honorable man, he grants him his petition. And it says that you would keep me from harm, and that it may, excuse me, and that you, your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from harm. Uh, that those, those phrases there together, uh, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me, uh, be with me and keep me. Uh, those two phrases put together kind of have this meaning or this uh, picture, if you will, uh, that you will uh, make me, that you will fashion me. I, God, he, here Jabez is asking God, God, be with my life and form it and fashion it after what you deem right and what you deem fit. And what, that's a wonderful prayer to pray, isn't it? As we're going into next year, I know you have some goals. I know you have some things that you probably would like to accomplish. Maybe you even took the time to write down some New Year's resolution. Maybe you're keeping them all in your, in your mind. Uh, but, but it would certainly be a, a good prayer for us to pray, not only at the end of any year, but, but daily. God, you lead me where you want me to go. You guide me where, where I should be. You take control uh, of my life. And specifically, he says that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from harm. Uh, that, that idea there of harm is, is evil or bad. And it, it harkens to, to Psalm 23 where, where David the psalmist talking about the Lord being his shepherd. Uh, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It reminds me of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 13 in that model prayer that Jesus prays. Do not lead me into temptation, but deliver me from evil. That's the type of prayer that Jabez is praying here. God, keep me away from evil. Keep me away from danger. But if I have to go through it, God, please be with me. And I think it's interesting there that he says that you will keep me from harm, keep me from evil, keep me from bad, that it may not pain me. Why is his name Jabez? Because he was brought forth in pain. Uh, he wants to live a life that it has a higher meaning than his name. He wants to live a life that is, is greater and more important than what other people might think about him. Don't you? Shouldn't we want to live a life that's more important, that's greater than what people think about us? Uh, we want to live a life of service to God and make a difference uh, for God in this life. And God granted this man's request. And then we never hear about Jabez again. What, what, a, what an honor it would be to live a life worthy of two verses within Scripture. That, that Jabez, or that you, were more honorable. You lived your life differently than the people around you. You were notable. Not notable because of fame or fashion or looks, but notable because you were honorable. Because you lived a godly life. And that as you did so, you sought God's guidance, you sought God's blessings, and because of your honorable life, He granted your request. If you don't have a, uh, a plan or a vision or a hope or a future or a, an idea of what you want 2020 to be like, let that be it. To live a life worthy of God's great love, worthy of God's great sacrifice. You won't live perfectly, neither did Jabez. But he was honorable, more honorable than those who are around him. So honorable that God granted his request. As we pray these prayers tonight... We pray that we will live a life worthy of his love, worthy of the gospel, a life worthy of him answering our prayers as he deems fit and blessing us and blessing us indeed. If you have any, night, any uh, needs tonight, uh, we would certainly love to pray for you and take your wants and petitions to the throne room of God where we can find mercy and grace to help in a time of need. If you have any needs, I invite you to come as we stand and sing.